Well, we have to say good morning to all of you um, joining us now. Again, make sure you get interactive. Always use the hashtag when you're doing that. TV3 New Day is the hashtag. And then also go look for us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We're streaming the live and uh, look for TV3 Gun as well. Uh, Ken Suman, uh, former memo, uh, no, former Infantiman MCE, uh, your uh, you're an ardent uh, viewer of um, TV3 New Day. We, we say thank you very much for watching us. And uh, it says good morning to all of you as well. And um, let me just introduce the Deputy Minister for Energy, Member of Parliament for Second D. And I have Andrew Japamesa right here in the studio. Good morning to you. Morning. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, Yourself? Great. I'm well. I'm well. Uh, let me say good morning to our church viewers as yes, well. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Especially. Especially to twins in the uh, second D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then let me uh, also introduce uh, a former High Commissioner uh, to India and uh, uh, currently the President for the NDC's uh, Professional Forum. Forum. Okay. The NDC Professional Forum, Sampi Yali. Now, both of them are legal practitioners, though, so it makes a good, a good morning to you as well. How are you? Good How morning. was your weekend? Well, fine. Okay, great. And um, I, I, I see that y you, you, you have been having a lot of debate or you were having a lot of debate in the House in approving those uh, revenue bills or handles. Uh, how important were they in the first place? Well, I guess that uh, following the budget presentation, mm. Mm. Uh, uh, I was even surprised that these revenue bills delayed beyond 31st Zimba. Mm. Because the law really is clear, uh, Section 22 of the Public Financial Management Act, and I've argued this before, when the e-levy passage delayed beyond 2022, uh, 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 right? And why, why do I say so? Uh, Section 22 of the Public Financial Management Law is clear that uh, uh, before the year ends, mm -hmm. Parliament ought to do three things in respect of the approval of the budget. The approval of the budget itself, the approval of the appropriations bill, and every other revenue measure that is intended to implement the budget. Mm. But of course, we all know uh, the circumstances that led to the delay. There was a lot of opposition to some other matters, and Parliament really did not have time to deal with, with these issues. Why I see some other matters? Because really, if you look at the report of the Committee mm. on Finance, mm. These revenue bills were, uh, were approved, you know, uh, uh, at committee. It was only when it came to plenary that uh, our friends on the other side uh, decided that they were going to oppose it. Uh, uh, because... They had always said if, they would oppose it. Well, I don't Is recall. Uh, the committee's report... Within uh, the public space. Well, uh, so if they say one thing to the public and do another in parliament, then the public really ought to judge them. Okay. But... Recall that sometime in 2021, 2022, mm -hmm. our friends were the ones who were loudest in their call for Ghana to go to IMF. Now, we got to the point where the government took a decision that because the measures that we had put in place or intended to put in place had suffered some mishap along the way, it was important for us to go to the IMF. And so a decision was taken to go to the IMF. Mm -hmm. These revenue measures are part of the prior actions to enable you conclude the IMF program. So I wonder how and why those who were loudest in making the call for you to go to IMF are now opposing the very acts that are necessary for you to conclude the IMF program. But of course, uh, knowing them, I have been asked to restrain from the use of some words like nation records. You call the NDC nation records? Are they not? Okay. At the time that they told um, the Nanado led government to go to the IMF, there was available the DSSI, if I remember, the death suspension initiative as well. And then at the time, um, it was envisaged that if we went earlier, all the rigorous difficulties we are now having to go through to get a board approval would have been shortened. We wouldn't have to go through. That was good advice. Well, I, I look, I, I don't 
know the details about whether the DSSI or availing ourselves to it would have shortened the process or otherwise. Government said at the time that, look, we've been to the IMF 17 times already. We know the kinds of conditions that the IMF program would impose. Let's look within and try and find ways of increasing our revenue. Because if the pot or the pie is bigger, then you would be able to be in a position to then pay off your obligations that you have contracted or uh, accrued as a result of clearly the issues that we needed to deal with. So I take a step back always and ask myself, yes, our economy was challenged. <clears throat> okay, uh, right from the very beginning when we came into government, mm -hmm. we are actually in an IMF program. Mm -hmm. Our issues were compounded by some decisions that we took to pay off significantly the energy sector bill. Mm -hmm. Question is, if we hadn't paid, what would have been the consequences? The banking sector cleanup exercise that was undertaken cost huge sums of money. Question is, what would have been the consequences if government hadn't taken the actions? Now, who caused them? Why, why were those problems created by the MPP government? I'm asking you. There's the argument that no, we wait, could wait, have, wait, we, wait, wait, Johnny. We, we could have. Look, my name is Roland. Look, you, Roland, could have, you could have used. Look, a, you, see, you, you could have used a better, see, a better means to go look, through the process give me of the better sanitizing means of paying for the bill. That's, that's what the finance people say. Wh which one? They speak without proffering the so-called better means, and you expect me to take that, or the good people of this country to take that. Well, you had a finance minister. So, so I'm saying, of course, of course. So, so those decisions were taken. So you recall also that because of those extraordinary expenditures that had been incurred, government was reporting below the line. What did that mean? And like, you were no, advised. Oh, please, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I, you know, honestly, uh, believe that that advice should not have been taken because it came from the NDC. And the very next day, they held a press conference telling you what are debt to GDP ratio. So anything the NDC so, says is wrong? But of, of, by their own actions. Which actions? Why, you, you're not in this country. The kinds of utterances, comments that they make, that look, yes, it's part of your debt. But Roland, I ask myself, mm -hmm. every day when I earn my salary, there's some regular expenditure that I make. Okay? And if for some reason, some misfortune befalls me and I need to find some facility to deal with. Why? Well, it's part of my debt. Mm -hmm. But everybody knows how that obligation came about. And it, not, it ought to take me time and a certain program to deal with it. That's exactly what government was telling Ghanaians. That look, this is my regular budget cycle. This is my revenue and how I expend it. These extraordinary expenditures that arose that I needed to deal with ought to be treated separately. But we are where we are, and it's all been consolidated. Fine. I'm saying that post that, the global pandemic that hit the entire world. You are going to the also had pandemic cancer, again. But unless, of course, you want to pretend as if you are an ostrich, okay, and bury your head in the sun, in the sand, and forget everything else that is happening around you. No, no issues. But I'm saying that. All these things led to the point where the revenue measures and the economic measures that government sought to implement mm -hmm. were not succeeding. And so a decision was then taken to go to IMF at the time that the president took the decision. The argument is that it was too late in the day. How was it too late in the day? You tell me. Ivory Coast went last week or two weeks ago. Was it late? They didn't have economic challenge. In fact, they were the benchmark that we're being told to follow. So what are we talking about? No. Look, I'm saying that unless, of course, we expect that the issues around the world will be the same, which cannot be, because every country and its circumstances and situation is unique to itself. Government, and so accordingly, Ghana is unique from everybody else's. The response, reaction to whatever issue that confronts us will be dealt with separately and Mr. Japan, Mr. The, the connoisseurs and the observers of the economy say that government took their decision too late in the day, and that is why we were or are at wit's end.
currently. Well, how, how are we? And that's even we? while we're well, getting a delay well, in approval at the board. How are we getting a delay at the board? There are prior actions that you need to uh, uh, undertake. Indeed, and in fact, the staff level agreement was reached in record time. Between July and December, we had signed a staff level agreement. We've concluded the domestic do debt exchange. Okay, revenue measures ought to be passed. That has been done last Friday. So how was government late? Of course, the expectation was that we're working towards a March conclusion. But of course, foreign debt component discussions have not been concluded. People actually suggested that the timeline that government was working within was too ambitious. And why not? Why not? We ought to be ambitious in trying to expedite the process of resolving the problems that we are in. But thankfully, now many of the issues that we need to do before going to the board has been dealt with. And so the expectation is that between now and June, when we conclude the remaining outstanding matters, then we can go to the IMF board and try and bring our economy back to pre-COVID days when we saw so sustained economic growth in excess of 7%. That will be when? When we conclude the program. Okay. Now, let me just take you through um, the, the tax handles that we have by way of the graphics. And then I'll come and ask uh, Andre Japamesa last question. So, uh, we're being told uh, by the finance minister that projected revenue, um, <coughs> excise duty amendment bill, we're going to get 400 million Ghana cities annually. Growth and sustainability bill, 2.2 billion. Income tax amendment bill, 1.2 billion. Okay, so of course these have been approved. If the president uh, assents, then uh, fully we implement them. Now, uh, we're going to have some consequential uh, actions by way of payments or changes in the, the way you, you spend on your utility. So water, you and I, we're going to have uh, a change upward 80% for industry. Commercial bottled water and drinks, 172%. Electricity, 65%. We're told that these are precursors. You need to have these before you go to the white people. Uh, the people that were described by some members of government as schoolboys uh, at the IMF, so-called. So and, and the government wouldn't even go to them. Uh, if we have more of them, please, let's display them. So we're going to also have local manufacturing manufacturers paying taxes and tariffs. Um, for, for those who will be levied on imported raw materials, 2.5% will be increased. Uh, network charge. So we're going to have, um, well, as far as we're, 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 we're looking at the network providers, 2.5% tax rates. IRS tax deposits. We're going to have special import levy, another 2%. Ghana exim levy. Of course, not uh, all categories. So this one doesn't apply to everybody. Get fund, 2.5%. So if you take a look at that, we're going to have Ghana Shippers Authority fee, network charge, COVID-19 health, network, ECOWAS processing, etc. So the question then I ask you is, um, when, even though these are precursors, the advice the government was that in order to avoid some of these, you needed to reduce drastically your expenditure. What's the defense? Well, have you taken time really to read the budget uh, of 2023? And you didn't see the revenue. Which one? The workshops and things. <laughs> that, that's the only one you saw, right? No taxes, workshops, no. Um, you see, uh, no we, gifts we're doing, at we're the doing end a of... certain service of providing information and education to the public. Mm. And so uh, I guess that uh, it's important that in that regard, we take a certain posture. Mm -hmm. Because this list that you put out there, why was it all as a result of Friday's revenue measures? No, no, no these passed? are some of them already being paid so, and then so some of the upward you've, injections. You've, you've, you've outlined all the taxes and levies that are associated with imports. Uh, to put it out there when you're having a conversation on uh, the three revenue bills that were passed to create what? Uh, uh, you, the uh, electricity tariffs are the purview of PURC. Okay, uh, uh, that's the agency that approves 
uh, uh, tariffs in respect of electricity and water. And so if you put that out there as part of the conversation on the three revenue <coughs> measures, what, what really are you seeking to establish? If I understand, then I know the way that I respond to your question. Otherwise, then I draw my own conclusions in my head and proceed. Please proceed. Okay, because, draw your conclusions in no, your head uh, and proceed. Well, I, I will. See, um, it's important that we recognize that, like we're told in the past also, that nobody has delight in imposing taxes. Uh, but these are the only sources of monies that government gets to provide the goods and services and the development that we all want. Okay. Right? And so we have racked up bills that are outlined to you in terms of the energy sector payments and the uh, banking sector cleanup and all those other bills, the COVID bills that we've racked up. They need to be paid for. We need to bring our debt into sustainable levels. And so government has to find revenue to deal with that. Part of the IMF conditions is to improve your revenue generation. That's why we said to you that, yes, we've been to IMF 17 times. We know what the conditions would be. And so let's look within. Let's bed and share. Let's try and find ways to generate the revenue ourselves. We saw the opposition to it at the time that government sought to implement some of those revenue bills. Okay? This is a government that, when it came into office, Which reduced, please, 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 reduced and or abolished 17 tax line items. Opposition Fact to what? which bills? I'm talking Revenue about the e-levy. Oh, Last yes. year. Can you stop this rhetoric? Why, why? 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 Why do you want me to pretend as if I'm you? No. The, the, and, and, and to the bury my head. The difficulty that There's, industry... The, you have there, was, a, no, I, there was, see, there was please, industry... Please, having, hold on. Difficulty. I don't have a with, problem. Uh, so the, why the, everybody is entitled also? to his view, but I'm saying mm -hmm. that the government has a responsibility, okay, to deal with these issues. After all, everybody is pointing the fingers at government, and legitimately so. But these are measures that necessarily ought to be taken so that we bring our economy back to the period where we saw sustained growth. Unless, of course, in the conversation, as is typical of most people. Let's discount everything else that happened between 2017 and 2020 and take only the things that have happened post-2020 to have every conversation that we're having. And then when you make reference to it, then you say, oh, come on, don't, don't, don't. Why do we have to? Mr. Sampi <laughs> Ali, um, the difficulty that Mr. Japamesa and then government people have is that... Um, well, it could be finance people, the professors, those in industry, etc., and including you, the main opposition. You don't seem to realize the situation in which Ghana is. And as a result of that, try to um, cooperate with government to enable some of these, even though difficult, tax handles to be implemented so that we get ourselves out of the difficulties that we face. Thank you, Roland. Uh, two small comments. I work this program a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I must tell my younger brother and his friends the their attitude towards journalists when they are asking questions is not laudable. You understand? We have all been in this game for a long, long time, and then when they were in opposition, we all heard and saw what they said and how some journalists got them on to see what they said. We are all living witnesses. Today, if you are in difficulty and people are asking you difficult questions, you don't say that I'm forming my own opinion in any and all oh, kind of things. It's becoming one too many. And I didn't expect my younger brother, who is very fair, to also toe that line. <laughs> the second thing Why, if anything is that, that I said was offensive, I really wrong. Yeah, and I apologize. That's Please fine. Let that's a, that's he, the he, has a, he has only seven minutes more. Please that's the gentleman of your father I know. <laughs> the second thing is for him to mm -hmm. sit here, look into my eyes. Mm -hmm. and, and the rest of Ghanaians. The, the rest of Ghanaians and call me, me, Sampi Yale, who is almost his uncle, a nation record. You know. You mean because he describes the NDC like that? Of course, that. I'm a key member of the NDC. And then he describes them 
as a uh, nation wrecker, he as a lawyer knows the implications. And he knows that I'm not a nation wrecker. Otherwise, at my age, I will not be sitting here talking about this country. Okay, so now to my question. Now, the, he said the NDC had been loudest in opposition. Mm -hmm. What is our role? By the scheme of things, what is our role? It's our role not to keep the government on its toes. It's not our role. And offer alternatives. Alter offer alternatives. That is our role. So if government is pursuing a policy, and then we are saying, no, please turn to the left, because we've been even, we even have more experience in government than you are, because we have been in the opposition before, and we, we have been in government before, we've gone to IML before, and we know when to go. You know, when we were little children, and then when we trap our crops, mm -hmm. you know, he knows, uh, Bakechi, you know when to go for your crops, right? Because if you don't go, somebody will go and remove your crab and take it away. So we know when to, when we were advising, please, this is the time to go to IMF. We knew what you were talk, talking about. You understand? Again, we have been very loud about their deception. What is their deception? Deception. Today, this morning, on TV, Johnny, we're showing. I mean, if you deceive Ghanaians that you are going to run an economy from taxation to production. And then we are not seeing the production. And it is more, more, and more, more, and more taxes. And we celebrate that we have imposed more taxes on Ghanaians. Roland, that is what we are talking about. See, a government is put in place to resolve problems, not to compound problems. Right? Today, the salary of workers have not been increased for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then when it was increased, about 7%. Mm -hmm. And the taxes are coming in and coming in, coming in. I'm not the guy, but the guy has they have a problem. You can't draw water from stone. You saw the Guta people and the rest, you see, advocating and allowing the NDC people to be resistant in their opposition. You, you heard and saw it. Today, prices of goods are high. They're skyrocketing. Skyrocket. Inflation is how many? How, how, about 50%. Well, it's 52 now. 52 now. Relax. It's, it, they, see, they say it's better. It's how better? When I go to buy something and the price is one and a half times, how is it better? And apart from that, VAT has been increased. And these are uh, direct taxes, you understand, have been increased. The incidence of all this taxation goes to who? The consumer. This is the consumer you have imposed 15% service charge on all government activities. You know, he talks about uh, banking sector cleanup. I call it the banking sector fraud. Why? Yes, wait and listen to me. You told me that some of the banks were not even able to fulfill their um, requirement because they move it from about something to 400 uh, million. The capitalization. Capitalization instantly. So most banks were not able to uh, 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 f fulfill that. And therefore they became, became what you call bankrupt, whatever. And then there was also a Boulder's report that also did indicate that some shareholders and directors of the banks were misapplying that is a depositors' funds. That is a it, different it, thing. It was all part of the reasons, reasons why the Bank that, of Ghana you, and the Ministry of Finance th thank you, sir. as a ba thank you, bank sir. of Ghana. When you have such a situation, mm -hmm. couldn't we... That is why the, the alternative was. Couldn't we have just removed the top who were misconducting themselves? And let the banks work. And then let the banks work. Without doing the charade, charade publicly. Yes, because then you see... That's the alternative. That was an alternative. He says that, no. Wait, the, wait a minute. It wait was the, a decision. That, that was a government decision. And we have seen the problem. Once you remove the banks that were, I mean, close to the economy. I mean, when I say the economy, I'm talking to the traders and other things. Do, do you know GN Bank? You travel to your hometown. Every two other I, villages. I actually had an account there. Yes, every three other villages, GN Bank had a, a, a bank there. This was banking to the people. I remember Prophet, President Kufo saying that we should do financial sector inclusion. And we, uh, we then sought to increase these banks. You collapsed these banks. You told us that they were 9 million, 9 billion or whatever it is to clean the banks. You ended up 25 billion. What is the difference? What accounts for it? Roland, they told us uh -huh, that they were going to use the monies
to pay the, uh, the, the depositors. What happened? They gave them bonds, five-year bonds. And then this is the fifth year, right? This is the fifth year where the bonds are supposed to mature. Then you have... Uh, uh, done the this is some PL. We're told that this is a precursor. We need this to get the board approval. You see, we, they have run this economy so low that now the whole of Ghana depends on three billion. Roland, I don't understand it. Now, they told us by March, if they don't get the IMF loan, you see, the country will collapse. Blackmail. Pure blackmail. Has the country collapsed? Now, they are going for IMF. And how, what is the value of the IMF loan? Is it not three billion? Chief, is it not three billion? Is three billion the sum of money that this country has not seen before? <laughs> is this is three billion the sum of money this country has not accrued before? See, today we don't have an economy. We have a year Pimsu economy. Yeah, Pimsu. Every day you Pimsu. You know, you see what I mean? Yeah, Pimsu, one lie after the other. Roland, you people told us, you people told us that Muhammad was incompetent. He was mismanaging the economy. And you saw the uh, whatever tweeters of the government officials, including Baumia, lamenting on taxation. Today, what are we seeing? Today, what are we seeing? We are talking about the energy sector levy and all those things. We had made preparation for that and established strategies for resolving them. You are talking about, when did you start the energy sector levy? You have run the COVID levy. You know, the COVID, which you had so much money, even to use for funding part of your budget. Now you still claim that. That's why you called him. So are you still reciting those poems? The COVID, which gave us more money than we could have made, you are still blaming it. Roland, this is the fallacy we have. This is the fallacy we have. We are a broke country. I see, never in the history of Ghana have we been declared this bankrupt and downgraded. Never in the history of this country. You see, we are, in a, we are now a junk economy. So you say you shouldn't talk. And then you call me a nation wrecker. You who have wrecked the economy. You who have, you, you. I mean, from security to education, nothing is working. You, when you are going to be possible, tap right and you pass through Biposu. Do you see the river there at Biposu? Your own Biposu. Do you see it? Do you see it? You have run our economy. You have destroyed our environment. You have destroyed our school education. Security, common security, you cannot handle it. Look at you. You have been in this country. Boku is in crisis for how many years? You can't resolve it. Then you say what? We are nation wreckers. Now, now let's, let's go to Professor Lord Mensa. Professor Lord Mensa, I remember back in 2019, they predict that government by the close of that year needed to make a decision whether we uh, would have to go to the IMF cap in hand and get um, some, <coughs> some remedies, so to speak. Professor Lord Mensah, these new tax handles that will affect even Akpateshi, uh, we have p pure water, no, 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 just no. normal... Tax combo um, in this country. Oh, items, tax direct taxes, taxes. Direct taxes. Yeah, and even for the ones that are going yeah, for specific people, sectors, oh, yes. they, at the end of the day, they, because, the cost <laughs> will be transferred in pricing to the consumer. Um, could we have averted these taxes or perhaps not gotten here, rather, before going to the IMF for board approval? Please unmute. Unmute. Prof. Have you unmuted? All right. Okay, wh while we wait for, for Prof. Um, now, if... Could we have, couldn't we have prevented this? Um, and w in what ways could have government done this? Because the advice was that Professor Lord Mensah, for example, said we could have done this by 2019, making a decision 2020 and all that. Yeah. Well, I, 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 it would have been interesting to hear his perspective mm. on uh, the reasons why he uh, would advocate for us going to IMF in 2019. Uh, uh, because in my recollection is right, we exited the IMF program in 2019. Okay, and so uh, 
Is it the case that he would have wished for us to continue the IMF program uh, beyond 2019 or that we should have started a new program in 2019? Uh, I don't know. You know, um, you see, um, sometimes when I hear people say that um, uh, um, government is not interested in, you know, uh, critique and uh, criticism and all that, I uh, wonder whether we all live in this country. Uh, uh, nobody opposes. Okay, hold on. Lord, Prof, yes. are you in? Yes, I am. Great. So did, you heard my question. Could we... Yes, I could we have undertaken some uh, revenue measures or s some financial measures and, and perhaps not be so steep on the ordinary Ghanaian with these uh, new tax handles before right. getting a so, board approval? And how should we have uh, done that? All right. Good morning. And uh, good morning to our, my fellow uh, panelists at the studio. Morning. Um, in 2013, 2019, I mean, clearly, if you look at how we got happy after exiting the IMF and the first budget we read after IMF, clearly, after exiting the IMF, clearly the signals were clear that the economic you know, management that took us to IMF by reading budget with a huge deficit, which calls for you know, financing, i.e. possibly borrowing, be it externally or internally were signals on the ground. Now we went to IMF and IMF gave us conditions. And these conditions are not just for anything, but to keep you financially you know, disciplined by ensuring that when you read a budget, the deficit you know, at least should penetrate 5% of your GDP. But then the first time we exited the IMF, we read a budget and the deficit was around 11%. Subsequent to that, we're reading around 15%. Then you ask yourself, how are we going to finance all that? I remember how we're jubilating, you know, as a result of, you know, exiting the IMF. Government was so happy to the extent that, you know, some of the expenditures that were being held on as a result of the IMF, you know, program, they went back to it. And so I asked myself, are we heading towards IMF again or not? And of course, if you read a budget and you create a deficit, definitely you must finance the deficit. <coughs> and I always say that business is in the deficit, but if you don't take care and you continue to project yourself by reading a budget which has a huge deficit, you will end up bringing the economy to a halt and especially when you are spending in areas that are not building up into revenue generation, then trust me, you'll be running your economy and you end up you know, with IMF. Then it may look like someone who has an insurance, I mean, with, with, with um, an insurance company, and then seeing a hazard and then running into the hazard and then calling for the insurance for a rescue. Being with IMF, you know, more or less looks like, you know, we have an insurance backup. And more or less, we run the economy down and then we go to IMF. And I believe this is why, you know, the, now that we find ourselves with IMF, the conditions are going to be different compared to, you know, what we had earlier. What we had earlier, they were forcing government to do, you know, a budget deficit of about 5% to GDP. Mm. But now, I don't think they will even do the 5%. I presume with the frequency and the timing, that we've gone back to IMF, they're going to do about 0%, you know, I mean, um, deficit that will be required by the government of the day to ensure that they stay financially, you know, disciplined. So we could have done better. We could have done better by slowly, you know, building up our, you know, economy in such a way that, you see, in economics, you cannot reap where you have not sown. Mm. That's what we need to understand. The economy to get to a level where you can tax to the doorstep of the ordinary citizen, that economy must be running at a certain threshold. That economy must be running to ensure that the agents within the economy, I'm talking about businesses, talking about individuals and government itself. All these years that you know you see government machinery being active. 
We've created several ministries which are drawing down, you know, expenditures. And these are all signals that tells you that the agents within the economy, if I say agents within the economy, I'm looking at the government, businesses, and individuals. Mm. Economic activities has been concentrated at the government level mm -hmm. without being transferred to the, you know, the businesses, without being transferred to the ordinary person. And as a result of that, the economic vibrancy that is required to introduce taxes is mm -hmm. not there. So you may introduce the taxes, mm. you end up, you know, crippling businesses here and there, every now and then. If you look at the three tax handles that has been introduced, these are taxes that are going to hit the doorstep of the ordinary Ghanaian. And a situation where it's not even hitting the doorstep of the ordinary Ghanaian, the businesses that are going to be hit will pass it up to the, you know, ordinary person. So obviously, the rate at which we are reading our budget with creating deficit and financing the deficit with euro bond and then, you know, borrowing internally were all signals that tells you that within the shortest possible time, we are going to go to IMF. Okay. Now, Prof, Prof, what came Prof, in Prof, and what sped us up Prof, wait. to IMF? Prof, yes. wait. Prof, wait. You are saying that from 2017, because we were going into the market, whether international or domestically, to uh, be borrowing to shore up, um, it was unsustainable. It was. It wasn't. Not okay. at all. It okay. It was. It was. It was not sustainable. Now, yes. what was the alternative then? So that if the finance minister was telling us back in May last year that we we're a proud nation, etc., we then would have believed him that we indeed were a proud nation. We wouldn't have gone to the IMF. And even these tax handles could have been prevented. You see, economic management and the way you move the economic indicators. Sometimes we look at just the numbers and look at the environment and take a posture by being aggressive. But you see, economic buildup is not, you know, a matter of um, jumping numbers. Because sometimes you read a budget that we have and maybe... Let's take 2020, uh, 2023 budget, for instance, and then take 2022 budget. If you look at the rate at which we've jumped our revenue collections, the rate at which we've jumped our expenditure, it tells you that, I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to find it difficult financing, you know, um, such, you know, budget. Mm. And the budget is red, and it looks like some kind of phantom numbers, and you wonder whether, you know, these numbers can be financed or not. We've been collecting taxes, no doubt about that. Tax is what is used to build nations. But then the question is, it's not a matter of always increasing taxes. Taxes serves as input to economy. But then the question is, what is the output? Usually we measure efficiency, tax efficiency. Mm. So what you are putting into the economy, the usage of the taxes, what are you building out of it? Then you'll be able to measure the tax efficiency to get to know that yes, indeed, you are putting in one unit, at the end of the day, you are generating one unit out of the economy that you are spending the taxes. So in the end, you know very well that you are doing very well. But then if a situation where you are spending, but then in the end, what you are generating are not matching up with what you are spending, you have to slow down. So if you ask me of the alternative, I would have said we should have slowed down on our expenditure way, way back. In and which areas? Come again. In which areas? There this... are several areas. You okay. see, we, we, government adopted a posture. And if you listen to the president's, you know, um, inaugurative, I mean, speech, he tells you that we are in a hurry. That tells you that, you know, the economic management is going to be aggressive from the beginning, from the onset. And the aggressive economic management means that you go for more debt financing. And... There's a point where you use debt financing that you get to a threshold that if you don't take care, you'll be bankrupt. There's benefit to debt financing. But beyond that benefit, there's also possibility that you will crash into bankrupt. And we could not identify that threshold. And that is where we find ourselves in now that we have to run to IMF, a situation where we cannot even finance our own budget. That we okay. Need support All right. From Please hold on for me. Uh, so, so basically, Mr. Japamesa, what he, he is saying is that um, from the onset, uh, we were in a hurry. 
So we brought all these pro-poor policies, et cetera. And then also we wanted to revamp, so industry, industrialization, et cetera. And then the social interventions also were important. But we, we just didn't get the balance right or the mix right. Um, is this something that government denies? Well, I guess that very recently, oh, oh. very recently, I believe it was at the State of the Nation address that His Excellency the President alluded to the fact that, yes, because he was in a hurry, okay, uh, some things that were done, obviously, uh, uh, were The done. President said that. Yeah, if, if it, my recollection is right. In, in okay. what way and, did he and, say and, it? And of course, I mean, you see... Did he say the way you are well, saying like, it? Two, two days ago, I was having a conversation with a couple of friends of mine, and I, I said to them that, you see, there's always on his side after the fact, okay? Uh, and, and so to that extent, uh, you, you may then reflect and say that, well, maybe uh, free SHS should not have been implemented so that one point, uh, uh, two. One, one million per year, uh, one, one uh, 100,000. Now we have over 1.2 million. Of, of Ghanaian children uh, had stayed home you know, and, and not have the benefit of education. Uh, but of course, uh, what will be the outcome in, 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 in 10 years? Okay, <laughs> maybe some will argue that maybe um, planting for food and jobs to try and increase our agricultural output should not have been done. Uh, and, and then we would ask uh, what would have been the impact in terms of food security and all that, okay? So there's always some questions that you may raise. Uh, maybe banking sector cleanup should not have taken place. So 4.6 million depositors lost their money, okay, <laughs> and, and all that. But really, uh, is, that, is that what it is? I, I don't think so. And so um, I, I think that uh, uh, importantly, the things that government did were necessary, were supposed to have been done. Uh, we have been saddled with some matter that obviously during the COVID period, uh, I can understand after the fact whether all the monies that were spent in vaccination and all that. You know, uh, you're talking about the special sanitizers, all the, the special audits that was done by the auditor general, yeah, of course. and the questions are rising. Yeah, there will be questions that will arise from every audit, no issue. But significant expenditures were made, which probably uh, because a friend of mine was arguing that look, he saw COVID as really a normal flu, <laughs> regardless of the fact that it killed in excess of five million people across the world. Okay, and so you may argue that well, maybe government. Should not, have, should not have expended all that money in trying to protect lives and livelihoods of Ghanaians. I, I don't know. But if you look at where the expenditures went, the uh, question is whether they were necessary at the time. Uh, my argument would be that they were. Of course, it's put our economy in a certain state, which then requires uh, certain action that government has taken. Uh, I'm positive that uh, uh, hopefully when we start this IMF program, uh, we'll be able to bring the economy back on its foot uh, and, and then, then move it back into the growth pools that we saw before the COVID pandemic hit us. Yeah. Mm. Now, now, Mr. Sampiali, at the end of the day, is the conversation that needs to be had. We are where we are and we're not going back. We need to look forward to it, how we get ourselves out. Um, how can industry, your side of the house, your side of the political divide, perhaps try to help government? Because now we're almost, we're on a throttle, so to speak. Well, um, the fundamental fact mm -hmm. is that when we went into the IMF program ending in 2019, we had one billion, and out of the one billion, the Mahama NDC spent one, one million. And so the 900 million was bequeathed to NPP. 
the 900 million was factually bequeathed to the MPP. And that's how come they were able to uh, say that we have turned the economy. I mean, Ajapa, tell me, between 2016 and 2017, mm -hmm. what did you possibly well, do? I can tell you that okay. between the time that you signed the IMF program until you left government, 18 months, you hadn't met what, what, what condition that you signed ahead. on. Please. Not one. Please, 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 please. please, please. If that if, I can please, tell you. please, please, please. If, <laughs> if we had not met the IMF conditions, you couldn't have extended I'm saying it. to you. It is that, wrong. But of course, it was precisely that reason please, why please, it had to be extended. Please, please, please. Because please, please, please. he didn't meet even one oh, condition. Oh, oh. Why are you heckling him? Please. I'm not heckling him. He's no, a big man. How can I heckle him? But that's what you're doing. What were the conditions? Please. But he asked me I'll give you three more minutes. I need to ask. You're heckling me. What were the conditions that we couldn't fulfill? So as to enable you to extend the program and to enjoy more. The fact is that, you see, if you take a reckless decision, you get a reckless result. How do you mean? If you tell me mm -hmm. that about 1.2 million Ghanaians will not have been able to go to school, let us go back to the statistics. You didn't go to a free SHS. I didn't, you didn't, but you have been educated. The population was not the same. The population was not the same. But what was the statistical research that showed that Ghanaians were not going to be able to pay school fees? And today, they are paying worse. They are paying worse. And today, the children, they went to school when? They are coming back today. And in three, three days, four days, they are going back. And parents are going to pay school fees. Double, triple. Never mind the kind of uh, uh, moral hazard that we have created with the program. We were telling you that, wait, before you uh, 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 do the free SHS, please be cautious because you are dealing with human beings. So now you're talking about expenditures that if were take, items that could have been... Yes, if you take reckless decisions, you end up reckless uh, with reckless decisions. And that's why today... Well, where we are. To where we are, we are. Okay. Now, you let see, me... Uh, uh, today, Prof. Mentor, before we go, before, before we go for, for, for the break... Um, we were told that in December we'll get the staff level agreement. Of course, we there were some precursors or some conditions. Uh, by March, ideally, we're told that we're going to get the board level agreement. Even though you, those in in corporate, in business, and in academia, said the way the IMF works, if you look at the way our indicators were, they were not strong enough for us to to get a board level agreement. Let's say, touch wood, we get a board level agreement in April, or let's say the next meeting that will be taking place May, June. Um, that three billion, how does that give us the space that we need to be able to restructure ourselves and create the space for us to, 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 to be free once again and, and get onto uh, a full motion, so to speak? Well, um, you see, let me go straight to say that the way the IMF works. That Mr. Lord Menzer, can I, can I have you uh, frame yourself well? I, I can only see your head, unfortunately. Can, okay. you, can, you, see, can, can you see me fully now? Yes. You, you, you seem to be too much in front of your camera. So I just need a, a nice portrait of you. That'll be fine. That'll be a close up. And tilt down. Just a bit of it. Uh, very good. And don't come forward okay. to your mic, uh, your, your, your lens. Just okay, go back. Then. Just go back. We can thank, hear you well you. and fine. Great. Okay, now. Yes, gentlemen. Nice. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you. So, um, let me go straight to say that, you know, the IMF and the way they work, they will not release the $3 billion, you know, um, outright this year for us to support it with our budget. Mm. The $3 billion is going to come on conditions. And it's going to be more or less like a three-year um, release, which every year you will get like um, one billion, you know, extended credit facility. Now, usually when we go to IMF, we normally think it's the financial support that they give us that is going to correct, you know, the economy. We had an economy that was moving in a certain momentum. And we had, you know, a government that came to change the momentum. The momentum was that the economy was running to a deficit of about 5%. Now we change it direct quickly to 11%. When IMF comes in, we have a soft benefit and then we have a hard benefit. The soft benefit is what helps the country, not the hard benefit. The 1 billion is not money to turn around the Ghanaian economy as we speak now. 
But then the soft benefit, which is the financial discipline or the conditions that comes with the money, that is what turns you know, the economy around, which we lack that kind of self-discipline to do unless we get the IMF. Usually that has been you know, the Ghanaian situation. So um, we, we know very well that if the IMF comes in, they're going to give us conditions. The conditions cut down expenditure, ensure that your budget deficit penetrate that 5% margin. And I'm telling you this time, if we don't take it, it will force us below the 5%. And then, you know, all these conditions that goes with government expenditure lines are the things that are going to control the economy and creep back the economy to the normal situation that we expect. So it's not, you know, directly what, you know, the IMF gives us that tells us. One billion is, is nothing to write home about. We're talking about an economy that is running a budget deficit of about you know um, um, seven six to seven billion. If you convert our budget deficit that we we had in a, in the twenty twenty three budget to you know the dollar rate as we speak now, mm. you That's should get 60, around sixty one sixty two billion dollar uh, Ghana cedis. Exactly, mm. exactly. So effectively, um, if you compare, you realize that it's not the money that will turn around it, but then the financial discipline. Okay. Now, um, while financial discipline is important, has the government, led by its finance minister, Ken Oferiata, shown the appetite to be disciplined in expenditure? That gives you the confidence that they, will, they, they could quickly get Ghana back on track, even with well, IMF. Well, we've not seen that signal yet. Uh, we saw part of it in the, in the budget, which... Um, they indicate cutting down, you know, some support, I mean, for government um, appointees, Article 71 appointees and all those. But you see, the quantification of this, you know, cut down in expenditure are not really clear to a typical Ghanaian. But then if you tell me that you've scrapped this particular ministry, you've stopped, you know, that ministry from operating or you've merged this ministry, I can go straight into the budget, the government a budget appropriation bill, and get to know how much you know government is saving for taking that decision. As we speak now, we cannot pinpoint and say that this is how much government has saved. And I was expecting that in the budget, when government took the decision to cut down, you know, the Article Seventy One appointees, you know, for support and all those, government should have stated clearly that this is how much we've saved for taking that decision. As a result of that, if we continue in that way, we should be able to save this amount, XC amount, in the next you know, um, nine months or in the next eight months. We did not see that. Hmm. But clearly, to communicate and send a good signal out there, we expect that you know, at least government should cut down expenditure by reducing the number of ministries. But we didn't get that looking at what happens in parliament. So effectively, government has not given us any signal that they are ready to reduce you know, expenditure. But I think when we go in for the IMF 3 billion and they put down the conditions for us- We'll have no option. Is, yes, we'll have no option than, All right. than to stay All right, now let's quickly do uh, one more round. Um, when are you told that we'll get the board approval, Mr. Andre Japamesa? Well, I, I'm not in a position to confirm uh, at this point. You can't I, tell us. No, I, I'm not in a position to. Unless, of course, uh, Roland. But the way you are that, talking here, you, you, I thought. Of you course, knew. It's, a, it's, a, it's a process, right? Uh, until you get to the uh, board, uh, you need to meet certain prior actions. Uh, a significant number of them have been uh, uh, concluded. Uh, I indicated earlier that uh, I know that the conversation with the external. Uh, uh, debtors are also ongoing uh, uh, if it's concluded as is expected before uh, the June meeting then that's when it will go for, for the re re requisite approval and my expectation is that government is going to work as hard as it can to ensure that that happens mm. I, I, well, You were asking me the way forward Yes. and I would advise my younger brother and all MPP communicators. That's where we are. We have gone beyond NDC MPP. You mean our current state? Yeah, our current state. Mm. Because the 
hardship they have inflicted on us is not being suffered by only NDC people. We are, unless he is not suffering it, but we are all suffering it. So they need to change their posture and communication strategy. This is the time to galvanize all of us, you know, so that when we are talking about taxation, you know, we can all fall in line and help you to mobilize the needed uh, uh, revenue. You understand? But as long as you antagonize a section of the Ghanaians, you may not get what you deserve. Now, secondly, some ministers who have misconducted themselves, like the Minister of Health, who ordered vaccines, and still we have not received the vaccines, you know, would have to be made to account. We have to take the Auditor General's report and look at all the infractions and start dealing with them. This is a way out. You know, I think that the president must think again. His retention of Ufurata is not only irritating, but unproductive. To who? To, 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 to many Ghanaians. Because, you see... By what measure? This is a man who stands in front of us and says that we are not going to IMF because IMF will give us conditionalities. We are capable of running our own affairs. A man who doesn't believe in what he's doing does not do, give up his best. You understand? And then selective the, 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 where they amnesia is that what it is? You, can, you have warned you know. Please, please wrap up. Wrap up. I, 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 I want to wrap up. Let, let, let me go on to the next You know issue, me please. that if I want to go into that uh, route, no, I, I only Roland. try to remember see, again, uh, that physiology. Uh, Roland, this is the finance minister who said we were capable of running our own affairs. And I said that he does not believe in the IMF. You know, this is the man sitting in front of IMF. And the IMF people know who he is and his uh, 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 brain set up. You understand? Now, but let me ask Roland, Roland, does the MPP sincerely believe that it, it takes only $3 billion to save this country? $3 billion. Apple, in my Apple, you know what I'm saying? One thing I know, you should call Poko, man, everybody. Yes, what can you At least. Yes, I'm so boomer. Yes, what can you Why Lazarus? <laughs> See, you have wrecked this economy. Totally wrecked. We have been downgraded. You know, IMF is just coming to clothe us with some uh, integrity so that we can do what? So we can borrow more. Not so. That is it, eh? That, otherwise, what? Nah, you are telling me that's what. Yeah, because IMF is coming to give you this integrity mm. All right. so that you can go back to the uh, uh, temperate things and the rest of the more money. That is the, our dilemma now. Now, so that the government alternative is, you see, mobilize guardians. You know, Rwanda, they came from civil war. The president had a certain communication. The president mobilized all Rwandese and said that this is where we are. And so let us come together to go to Rwanda and see. We need a, a change of mindset. We, change, we need to change the political communication. We don't need a president that call people naysayers, uh, Shadrach or whatever it is. We don't need a president like that. We need a president that governizes people, puts people together, and not they and us. As long as we are in DC, we are alive. We believe this you mean country. We believe Sambala and Tobias. And Tobias. Okay. This All country, right. NDC. NDC are the nation builders. NDC, we are the nation builders. Non-nation non, non records. They are the nation records. Yeah. Uh, and I can, if you want us to go to history about those who Professor Lord Benson. come out with policies to wreck this nation, it is the MPP, not the NDC. Professor Lord Benson. Ah. Yes, Roland. Now let's leave the NDC MPP for them to do the nation records, nation builders. But at the end of the day, your last word uh, before we leave you on the subject. Um, these tax handles that have now been approved, what do you envisage after they've, there's the assent by the president ultimately um, could bring to the kitty um, as far as the consolidated fund is concerned, but also on the reverse, its impact on the consumer? Right, obviously, um, if you look at the handles, clearly it is right at the doorstep of the consumer. We're talking about income tax, we're talking about mm. excise duty, we're talking about growth and sustainability, which is more generic, you know. 
So obviously, it's right at the doorstep of the of the consumer. It, will, it won't go through much channels to get to the consumer, as you know, other taxes have been doing, like import duties, levies, and other things that government has been placing all these years. But let me tell you that these taxes are going to wipe further, you know, the disposable income of Ghanaians. Already a typical Ghanaian home looking at income and inflation has lost more than 50% of the purchasing power because inflation is about 50, you know, percent. So when I receive my salary and salary has not been increased to that quantum of 50%, clearly tells you that I can only purchase half of the goods and services that I was receiving. So if these taxes come to, you know, top it up, no Ghanaians are going to be squeezed further. That is how I see it. Now, if you look at the happenings in the economy as we speak now, mm. you could see clearly that government is using both the fiscal policy and the monetary policy to squeeze money from Ghanaians. Some of them induced by, you know, our engagement with IMF, you know, others as a result of how we want to reform the economy. If you look at the monetary policy side, recently the policy rate was increased and you know, government has also, uh, sorry, monetary policy committee has, sorry, the Bank of Ghana also requires that the cash reserves that the banks are supposed to keep have also been increased. In a way, telling us that government intention is to what? Uh, to squeeze, you know, money out of the system. When it comes to the fiscal side, we have these taxes that is, are also being introduced. Then you ask yourself, at what point in the economic dynamics did money get to the people? that now we're trying to squeeze this money from them. That is the question we must ask ourselves. So for me, this is going to squeeze Ghanaians further and we should brace ourselves, you know, for that, you know, in the name of building our nation. But my problem is that with the pain that a typical Ghanaian is going to go through now, we, we intend to benefit from it in the long run. If it continues and it continues to be pain and pain every now and then, it won't help, you know, the economy at all. Well, thank you very much, Professor Lord Mensa, um, uh, finance and economic professor with the University of Ghana Business School. Thank you very much. And um, let me just take some two words from you uh, on our second subject, uh, which is about the Electoral Commission being told by you, a parliamentarian, so it helps uh, for us to put the matters into perspective. What actually did you ask the, uh, did you ask the Electoral Commission to do? Go and add a guarantor system, I'm, I'm being told. Well, Parliament made some recommendations after the committee of the whole meeting uh, for the consideration of the electoral commission and so uh, the expectation would be that they will look at it and then uh, deliberate on it and uh, if they find that uh, that recommendation is what they, something that they can work with uh, then they include it in the CI and, and submit but really I mean uh, I, I don't know why the comments of the speaker you know, uh, after the report was presented and adopted, to the effect that uh, 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 there's going to be some insistence that that is done. Because yeah, as far as I'm about concerned, the guarantor system yeah, inclusion, I mean, the electoral yeah. commission uh, would essentially, <laughs> if you like, for want of a better word, uh, compelled to include that in in the CI. Because as far as I'm concerned, that would be. Uh, going into the foray of uh, directing or controlling the Electoral Commission in terms of how it performs its function, which uh, for all intents and purposes by the Constitution is supposed to be an independent body. Okay, uh, and so the CI really is a document that ought to properly come from the custody of the Electoral Commission without any uh, uh, solicitation or... But why don't you think the speaker needs to do that? Because just weeks ago, um, government and its communicators were defending the EC it, that the draft until what had been made by way of the decision of parliament was okay with only uh, the usage it, of, I, of the Ghana card. I, I, I don't know about government and its communicators. Because they come here, oh, so I see please, them please, and I hear please. them. You, you people, uh, I, everybody has a view. So, okay, uh, uh, this, is not, view? this is not a government of Nanado Danko Akufuado matter. Uh, it's, it's an issue that borders on our elections. And so people, are, I, I really don't, don't I, 
I'm really indifferent about, uh, you know, uh, whether there's a guarantor system that is imposed uh, on the Electoral Commission. I'm only drawing attention to the constitutional imperative and the need for us to be cautious in the kinds of uh, things that we say that suggest, okay, that uh, some element of control uh, from external forces on the Electoral Commission. Why? Because there's a process. If the Electoral Commission submits the CI, mm. <laughs> Parliament can reject it, right, through a specific voting process of two thirds, right? That's true. If you don't get that two thirds, then it will pass. So you're that's, saying that's that. The process. So do I get it that so, you are saying that if a new draft is brought by the Electoral Commission, of course, an independent body, but has a guarantor system, the MPP side will reject it. I haven't said so. Okay. Then only, what are you saying? No, I'm, what I'm saying is that. Parliament had some engagement with the Electoral Commission, right? But as a committee, the committee submitted a report which is making recommendations for the consideration of the Electoral Commission. My worry is the suggestion by the Speaker when the report was adopted to the effect that if the EC does not include the recommendations, then the CI will not be accepted. That's where I'm saying we ought to be cautious. Why? But, but of course, the Electoral Commission is not bound to follow what anybody says. That's the point. That's your position. So that, but that's the, what the Constitution says, not me. And so let's be cautious in the <clears throat> kind of commentary that we make. I'm happy for the Electoral Commission. It, after all, the report was adopted by the entire House without a vote. The committee's report was essentially unanimous. So it cannot be that the NPP opposes its own recommendations as contained in the, commit the committee's report. So let it not be said that, oh, one side of the House is in favor of one process being adopted by the Electoral Commission and one side is against. No. I'm only saying that that suggestion from the chair, we ought to be cautious just so that it, must, it, it is not seen as Parliament directing the Electoral Commission. On how would that be, how how would that be a direction? But if you say that I've made recommendations to you and that, in effect, if you don't accept my recommendations, the CI will not be laid, what does it mean? Now, what to know? That's for members of parliament. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the guarantor system. <laughs> now, my, parliament. My junior brother. Mm. No, you're, you're, always you're, 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 you're always referring. You're always referring to as well. he's I, a man I, of his I'm own. Surprise, now. though. We you know Sham is never. No, I don't. That's no, he doesn't me. doubt it. <laughs> and uh, I, I like him, and he knows I like him, and that's why I guide him. You are not a lawyer per se. Now you are a politician. You cannot say that you are indifferent as to the guarantor system. Your constituent at a switch, who doesn't have a passport, who doesn't have a birth certificate, who doesn't have all the requirements. They have the Ghana card. Who doesn't have the Ghana I card? Encourage them. You to did, but sign it's up. not but it's not all of them who have it. Oh, majority. And those e who e don't e have e Japan. have the opportunity to have it between now and election day. E e e Japan. So you cannot be indifferent. You need to encourage as many of them, you know, to have it. That's how a politician behaves. You understand? <laughs> what are we talking about, Roland? We are talking about their system. Mm -hmm. If not checked, mm -hmm. we disenfranchise many Ghanaians because of their location. I mean, go to a prime place. And lack of access. Lack of access. Mm -hmm. That's what we are talking about. It's not only a prime place. There are many. Many places. The constitution is for the people. And by the people. But the Electoral Commission also the electoral same commission constitution empowers it. But the, the powers of the Electoral Commission is subject to the constitution. It's not absolute. Sure. Are you following me? It's not absolute. I am looking forward to see how the people's the people's representative, you people make Ghana, isn't it? The MPs, they represent the whole of Ghana, have unanimously said 
we want this system to be included. I am looking for the electoral commission coming to say that, uh, oh, because of our independence, we cannot take it. We are looking forward to that day. Mr. Sampiai, let me ask you this yes. question. If the electoral commission, in its resubmission of the so-called tweaked CI, leaves out the guarantor system, what will you do? Me. Not you, you per mean, se. I mean, we, those who are raising issues about the lack of guarantee. We cross that bridge, but it will be the most suicidal decision that the Electoral Commission will take. Thank you very much. Sampi Yale, uh, a former uh, High Commissioner of Ghana have to, to um, India. The Ambassador Sampi Yale, please. Okay. Ambassador Sampi Yale, yeah, ambassador thank you for, for coming. He is currently <laughs> the president <laughs> of <laughs> the NDC's professional <laughs> forum. NDC professional <laughs> forum. Yes, sir. Oh, you are the president. And the founder and president. You are founder and president. Yes, sir. Is he an advocacy group within the NDC? It's a registered organization and uh, affiliated with the NDC. Great. What do you do? Yeah, okay. We are a collection of professional like lawyers, doctors, engineers who believe in the ideology of social okay, democracy. You don't necessarily have to be, a, be members. No, we believe in social democracy. But you don't have to be a member of the NDC? Not to necessarily. Right. But uh, you'll but be a social democracy. What does it mean? That, right. that 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 Andrew, that property only that property only democracy. What does it mean? Andrew Japa, <laughs> Andrew Japa well, Mesa is a deputy energy minister. Uh, He's also driven. the member of it parliament is, uh, for second uh, day. <laughs> Both of them are lawyers, by the way. So what they are talking? Yeah. Uh, All right. So it's when we go for a break. But today we have some interesting issues also to talk about. Uh, we'll bring you the latest sports up update. You know by now that Isaac Dugbe lost his bid to become a world champion. Uh, WBO uh, was the belt um, at stake. He lost it. But we'll bring you the latest update as well. Manchester United, they got a whipping uh, 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 as they went to Newcastle. Uh, Hortons. And we'll see how it goes with them. And then also, my team, Chelsea, we decided to sack our coach. And then we'll bring you some local football news as well, as well as other sports. Just stay with us. We'll be right back.